Okay, I'm going to try and uh, show you a quick demo of my keyboard interface for the Adderall PCR 300. Um, the interface I made is a Mac MSP. Um, basically what's going on is that I've got the patch running on Mac on my computer and I have everything going in and out through my sound card which is a Motu Ultralight Hybrid Mark II. Um, and so uh, there's no visual feedback on this, so it's a bit of a challenge to uh, sort out uh, wave uh, form loop points. It has, like you can't see the waveform, so it's a bit difficult to know which part of the waveform to choose the sample. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my uh, input selection. We have one in, in, input one, input two, input three, input four. My microphone is connected into input one, so I'm going to hit number one. Um, now I can select record, which is this one. And so now it should be recording at the moment. And if I were to just do this, it should loop everything by default. So I turn that off. Um, next thing I need to do is choose the uh, direction, which is this one. No, that's actually that's looping. And uh, by default, it's on. It's always on anyway. And by default, the direction is always forwards. And so, if we press this one, we'll make it go backwards. Uh, here we have the loop points, which is probably a point to start on before the loop points and all that. So this one determines where in the buffer, which is eight seconds long. So it's a high margin for error without being able to see it. Um, so this is the loop point, like the, the beginning of the part, and this is the length as opposed to the second point. It's actually the length um, between the first point and the end um, loop point. So let's just, I mean, I recorded all the way through that buffer, so there should be sound all the way through. So let's choose a fairly small one like that. And here we have the envelope ADSR thing. So I'm going to choose a bit of a medium attack. Middle delay, long sustain, uh, no release. Why not? So, um, by the way, I use this for the input level, I didn't show you that. But this is for the input level, if you've got something particularly loud, you can just bring it down. But it's set to high when you load, up, load it up anyway, so you probably wouldn't need to touch that unless there's something particularly peaking. Um, this is the master volume level, so if I just move this up and down, I can uh, make sure I'm doing peak too much on the master setting. So you can hear that. I'm not sure if you can hear that sound or not. Okay. I'm gonna wake people up. I think it's polyphonic up to ten notes or something like that. I can't remember how many I made. Well at least handles five and going up and down the keyboard let's change the envelope settings a bit so long attack, long release maybe a longer decay actually and if you were to make it all nice and quick There's a bit of popping happening, uh, which kind of shows that the the uh, crossfade that I have going isn't particularly working for this device. But um, let's try making a, a longer loop for it and see how it sounds. See a bit more of a pulsing sound there. And let's try turning on and off pitch detection. So it's not on at the moment, but let's see what it makes of the sound, if it actually gets the right pitch or not. It's usually quite unpredictable and goes around everywhere, so you end up switching different notes, pressing the same button. Oh, it's pretty solid. Let's actually check if that's a C. No. <laughs> that's definitely not a C. That's an E flat playing on a C. But it seems to be staying quite still.
But you can get quite like like some quite interesting sounds, I think. Down here. I think this sort of thing would be really nice with added effects like reverb. That's quite nice. This is around the area that it's actually been sampled. I think this is the actual. This is actually being played normal speed. Um, so around this area is quite nice. It's like wind chimes or something like that. Okay, well that's um, my interface. Thank you very much.